welcome to Sculpture Studios. It's come round to that time of year again, where we're creating items for Christmas events, and here in merry old England, we're not talking just any event, no no no. It's not the Winter Wonderland, it's certainly not a McDonald's Christmas commercial, but the 2022 Christmas pantomime in London's Palladium. A massive end of the year show, this year Jack and the Beanstalk, and we've been commissioned to create, no no, not the Beanstalk, or the Giant for that matter, but a giant cheeseburger. What's it going to be used for? Well, we don't know, but I guess we'll find out later. We're just going to crack on and make it. We can assure you that there's absolutely no meat going into this burger, but that doesn't mean we can't beef up the project in our own way and show you guys exactly how it's done. And I'm talking well done. Starting off with our regular billets of polystyrene, we're drawing out and cutting the bulk shape of the 2.5 metre diameter form. The whole sculpture is going to be over a metre and a half high, and this means cutting numerous blocks to make up the volume. Everyone loves a bit of carving, I think that's what most people come here to see in terms of project making, but Aidan here especially at the studio considers it to be one of the most enjoyable parts of the work for him. Jess and Ruth are going to be sticking all of these blocks together using a polyurethane expanding foam. This is then left to set overnight before we can start moving it around for Aidan to start carving in the morning. Extractors on and hot wire at the ready, Aidan sets to work removing the bulk of the material before working down to handheld carving tools. The large corner pieces that you saw being cut off earlier, we're going to try and utilise for other parts of the burger, like the cheese and if we're adding any extra vegetables, or we'll save these for a later project. You know, it's times like this where, after 35 years of running his own studio, not to mention all of the years of freelance work he did before that, I wonder how many nail and wire brush strokes Aidan's actually done. Carving hamburger whilst eating a nice bit of chocolate. Cadbury's chocolate from the UK. The best. We're definitely not endorsed by Cadbury's, but Cadbury's, if you're watching, you know where we are, you know what I mean? Using a big old choppy knife now. Blocked it out roughly, that's where I kind of like it. Um, brush it down with a nail brush. Now I'm using this knife. Take out a little bit of detail inside. Providing I don't go too high. It just sharpens like, everything up for me. Because this knife is nice and strong, I can just wrench pieces out, carve them to about eight inches deep. Or 200 mil for you young guys and girls out there. But it's nice and strong that I can just pull bits out. More chocolate. And 
just thinking ahead, we're thinking about the lorry width on the road and keeping this flat in transit. It's too big for the road. Plus, when they get it to the theatre, they haven't got the theatre space at the back. So we're going to create a flat on the back so it can stand like that up in the air. Now, because of the theatre crew are working in the dark, bashing things up past it all the time, we thought if we create a flat on the back, they, it, it always gets stood up on the same area each time, save damage the front face of the like, of the audience point of view, and it will always stand up nice and square, nice and flat against the wall. I'll show you this. Here's a big flat surface. So it can be stood up like this against the wall the best it can be at this height. But it's better than two meters 500. And I'm gonna carve detail in the back here as well and artwork it up just the same. So from the audience point of view or even the wings, it still looks like a full burger. And also I'm going to create this hand grip so they can lift it there and there and they can also pick it up by the cheese as well so perfect grips all round that's nice and flat on the back which we've hot wired off so we know it's square and it will just stand up nicely so, yes i'll carry on Okay, I've gone on with a big heavy knife. Now I'm going to use a saw to develop it a bit of form. It's got nice sharp teeth along the edge of the saw. Normal saw and I can bend it and flex it to however degree I want to. But I've got to remember to keep it at the right curve for the right part of the job. So this is what I mean, a little demonstration. I'm going to cross hatch it, that means I go one direction, go the other, and then straight down. I'm not going to bore you with the rest of it, but that's cross hatching with a saw. Good tool, but that's got to be nice and sharp, so, and believe it or not, polystyrene does blunt the blade. Don't know how, that's polystyrene, and that's, that's a stainless steel but it still um, it manages to blunt it for some reason I think it because of the friction and the heat it gets hot so it rounds the corners off a little bit but that's how I get a nice steady form across the whole thing everyone including this pain in the ass is getting more involved now that Aidan's happy with the majority of the form sharpening all of the detail and sanding everything to lose that poly bead texture I mean, what proper polystyrene projects would be complete here in the studio without a particular secretly sourced sticky back tin foil, am I right? We get many an email nowadays with people wanting to know the secret. Could today be your lucky day? Drop us a line. Oh, and what is, uh, what is this you're using here, Aidan? Um, this you may or not know, it's quite new, it's a sticky back foil, very good. Just take it off, see where you want it, make sure it's overlapped really, really well, so there's no breaches, can't see any polystyrene, and rub it down, the burnishing it down is the right word. And where'd you get it from? Uh, Damn right. Yeah. The elves yeah. bring it. You know. Elves bring a fresh batch every morning. As this is going to a theatre, 
be inside for a captive audience on stage, we're using a Class O rated resin for fire regulations. We're trying not to go too overboard with how strong we're making this, as we're conscious that people still need to be able to lift this. With this in mind, however, we're still going to bump up a little more on the cheese sticking out the sides and any other points where we think this might be lifted. Once all of the fiberglass has had time to set, we give the entire form a rough sand down just to remove any of the major sharp points. We're now going over with some of Roof's magic mix of resin and fillers, whereby we're gradually going to work the blanket coat of glass fibre up to a good finish. We sand this back and reapply where necessary, and although we're conscious that this is going to be seen from probably about 20 foot away at the very minimum, we want to give our client something that's really high standard. This project has been commissioned by Crossroads Pantomimes and Mark Sherwood, who we've worked with in the past. We created a black taxi cab for a pantomime a few years ago and a couple of other items, and it's great that he's come back to us for another project, so thank you very much indeed. We're adding a few extra elements like dripping sauces and lettuce just to give this a higher level of detail. And speaking of detail, I feel like we need some sesame seeds on top. Soon people, soon. This sculpture shouldn't be taking too much heavy traffic. It's not as though it's going to have people touching or kicking it as they walk past or kids climbing on top of it in a theme park, and it's not as though it's going outside. So for this project, we're using water-based emulsion paints. As well as being far more cost-effective for the client for the initial artwork, this also means that repairs and any touch-ups are much easier at the other end, should this ever need to happen during the pantomime run. It's sesame seed time now, and to save creating just one cast at a time, we've modelled up three of them, and we've created a silicon rubber mould. We're now going to be creating casts from a two-part plastic. The curing process you're about to see takes between five and ten minutes, but movie magic means you can enjoy it significantly quicker. Burger. 
The artwork is progressively getting more and more layered, more and more theatrical, but we're just going to reduce a little bit of the weight here. Um, all of this has had a blanket coat of glass fibre, but obviously that's a, a very thick amount of polystyrene on the inside, and we're just trying to make this as easy as possible for anyone on stage. We don't actually know who is picking up or how many people, but making it as easy as possible for this to be lifted. As it's only going to be used for a few seconds, don't want anyone pulling their back out, certainly not for a burger. These larger-than-life props are projects that we really enjoy taking on here at the studio. Not only is it great fun to have a giant cheeseburger in the middle of the room, but it's a great bit of carving for Aiden, something the whole team can jump onto, and it's also enjoyable taking on a project of something we haven't created before. We get to add this to our online portfolio, our website, and we get to create a project video for all of you guys watching at home. Aiden's now going over with an airbrush to add some highlights and finishing touches before we send the client's photographs for approval. With all being well, we're now going over with a water-based lacquer to seal all of the artwork. These are the kind of jobs where we really feel like we get paid twice for, as simply knowing this sculpture will be used out in the public domain, in this case, in front of a pantomime audience, it's a great feeling. We often get asked where do all of these pieces end up after they've been used. Well, some are undoubtedly scrapped. We've heard many of them are reused again in the future. And I've no doubt in my mind that this cheeseburger is basically going to end up in Mark Sherwood's back garden. He simply won't be able to help himself. We'd like to thank the London Palladium for putting on a spectacular Christmas pantomime once again, and to Mark Sherwood from Crossroads for coming to us with a spectacular project. Unfortunately, due to the nature of the pantomime, this time round we couldn't secure any finished shots on stage, but that's just added incentive to go and see the pantomimes for yourself now, isn't it? We always love hearing what you guys think of our projects and our channel, so please feel free to drop a comment below, and by all means subscribe and give us a follow on social media. A big thank you to all of our patrons who support our projects and the creation of our videos. We love having you guys on board. And if you'd like to support our family-run studio, you can find our Patreon details below. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching.